when we see this question, who is my neighbor? We're supposed to, based on Jesus' example, go, anyone in need is my neighbor. Um, let's go to our panel. How do you think, guys? Um, how do you think, you know, because we're all at FGA and we're primarily interested in how we conduct ourselves in the church that God has placed us. Um, why do you think FGA in general doesn't do more outside of the church? Um, I think if we're very honest, these are, this is something that we're trying to change. Um, speaking, for my, speaking for myself and for the young adults, um, I think there's a temptation to fall into the trap of what I call the delusion of poverty um, with housing prices increasing. You know, there's always the a pressure to save out of money to buy a house and then once you get a house it's save money to pay off your mortgage and then to spend your time getting a better career right so we, we feel poor in time poor in energy poor in money and therefore we can't even pour out into the lives of other people yeah when when in reality if you're living in melbourne you're not really that poor in a global sense right um from the uh, missions perspective when talking about unreached people group and people far away sometimes it seems like an academic exercise and um, even like just statistics that we deal with um, i think because there is no personal connection and we don't have a proximity to their needs um, there is no conviction to do more yeah yeah, so at some level, we before we can even help other people, we've got to be able to be close to them. We have to see uh, that instead of like what the, the priest and Levi did, they walked to the other side of the road so that at least they're not, they're not have to walk directly past or, you know, to them. Um, hey, Aaron, what, what, what about you? What do you think? How can well, as, how um, how? as a youth, I think that Personally, the biggest struggle that we have is probably facing the judgment of other people because um, it's not really, let's say, normal to share about like Christ and everything in school because, you know, some people might not find it cool or whatever. So I think that would probably be the biggest um, thing that's stopping us from doing good or sharing more with other people. Yeah, there is kind of that kind of peer pressure, right? That um, allows us to just stay in these bad patterns. Um, continue. That's why I think there's this big difference between cultural Christianity and biblical Christianity. And we're honest, FGA has a layer of cultural Christianity. That means we might go to church and just go, hey, you know, we better do fellowship well. Uh, that means staying back to eat food together and a bit better it means praying for our home group members right and, and there's a bit of a culture of that which is great but we actually have to make sure that whatever it is that we do matches not to our cultural christianity but to biblical christianity which means that the bible overlays and supersedes whatever our normal culture is and we have to break away um, from that norm. So let's see, um, let's look in to see how, um, how are some of the, th what are some of the things that move us to do good? Um, I'm keen to actually hear from Heichen um, and Serena about this. Heichen. So I've been volunteering with the uh, Victorian Council of Churches Emergency Ministry for about 10 years now. And, um, and, and yeah, it, it, um, it's easy to fall into that thinking that I don't have this, I can't, I, I, I'm not enough and, and not yet. We, I think we fail to realize that the equipping is actually a spiritual equipping. It's not a worldly way of equipping. But when we, when we hear the words like in Leviticus 19.16, do not stand idly by while your neighbor's blood is shed. And so when that, um, when that becomes a heart motivation, when you do it because your heart aches for the person who is in pain, who has gone through a trauma, and you come alongside them and just be engaged and interested in, in the suffering that they're going through, that I think is love in action. And I have witnessed over the last 10 years, many times, how that love in action has translated into healing. 
and many times healing there and then in front of me. Wow, fantastic. And Serena, hey, I, I know you do a lot uh, uh, in, our, in, our, in the community. Uh, why don't you just give us a bit of a snapshot of some of the things you do? Um, a volunteer as a financial care coach with Crossway Life Care um, for some years now. And most of the participants I work with are single moms um, with young children or single ladies. Most of them have uh, some degree of mental health issues and also have no idea how to budget their income or expenditures yeah. and would end up with lots of um, credit card debts and over overdue bills. So why did I start volunteering? Not It definitely wasn't something I wanted to do on my own. It really was an outflow of the love of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I learned um, early on that I was not saved to do, to do life as a, in a holy Christian huddle. And it's the, it's the love of God that moves me out of my comfort zone. To want to reach out to the people who do not yet know His love. And when I did not know where to start, I prayed with a willing heart for God to show me where and how He wanted me to serve. He opened doors and I started with CRE, Christian Religious Education, about 16 years ago. And then Crossway Life Care and then World to Christ International in more recent times. There were many occasions when it's not convenient and when I was anxious and stressed, um, going into an unknown space. But the motivation for me to keep going is from Ephesians 2, 8, verses 8 to 10. And I know most of you would know this. We are saved by grace, through faith. We are created for good works and we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. You know, we began this series asking the question, how do we love our family? And today we end the session with that same question, how do we love our family, the family of humanity? I hope today's discussion takes you out of your comfort zone and into the community and into the neighbors where God has called us to go. God bless.